welcome to <laughs> Outside the Actors Studio, and today we're inside Colleen Renison's apartment. Um, Colleen, so you're you are better known these days as a rocker uh, singer. I guess so. Yeah, and uh, but in this movie Down River, you play a, a singer, and uh, I was on set visiting when you were filming a while ago, and you spent like all day starting. I mean, for I think for a, for for a singer type club person starting quite early in the morning at the at the uh, co What time was it? Was it like around nine? Nine or ten in the nine morning, and the you morning. were singing to a room full of extras. A little disorienting for uh, a little bit. It was weird. It was like being in a matinee because it was all set to look like nighttime, right? And so you'd go outside for a breather, and the, the sun, you, you know, you'd be a little bit jarred. You're not. You kind of get into a time warp. But it was that was fun. That was more like a day of recording. You kind of get into the studio earlier and record all day long. Um, not usually playing a show for many people though at nine in the morning. But uh, we have played some festival gigs. Mm -hmm. you, and know. you were singing a cappella, as I recall, to the just just. There's a point there, just just for. Yeah. yeah, I was singing a cappella, but I did have backup from my friends in the gay '90s who were playing my backing band in mm -hmm. Downriver, so that was nice. It wasn't just me mm -hmm. raising the roof in there all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was this, there was one scene there, one one moment there where you're supposedly playing on stage, and the guitar player gets lost in his moment and prangs you on the head with his guitar neck. Uh, that would be a rather disorienting thing to happen in concert, but what's, Barely. The, what's the weirdest thing that ever happened to you in well, concert? That's, I mean, there are strange things that happen, but that's actually a lot of the things that happen in this film, um, at least for my character, Harper, uh, are autobiographical because, of course, as you know, Ben's a friend of mine and we've been talking about this for years and that's actually lifted from a real story. I was playing at Guilt and Company uh, before I had started No Sinner and um, it was actually the first time I met Eric Campbell, my current guitarist. Mm -hmm. And he got pretty rowdy that night, and it's a teeny tiny stage, and he whacked me a couple times in the head with his guitar neck. So that's that's a true story. Mm -hmm. That is um, that is art imitating life. Mm -hmm. Your director Ben Ratner, he uh, he had a bit of a musical career. I think in the eighties, the, the bass player for El Cabong, as I recall. Did you ever see him play? Or? No, no, a kid I was you a child. Been... It was it was a, that was before my time. But he likes to uh, reminisce with me mm -hmm. sometimes. Like, still, does he still? go for the rock and roll street cred or <laughs> he likes to be able to talk about it you know like he's been there and stuff and you know the landscape has really changed mm -hmm. since uh, Ben Ratner was playing bass but um, you know once once a musician always a musician you've mm -hmm. got the soul of an artist it never dies <laughs> now you uh, you started out your career as a kid actor uh, you uh, <laughs> What was your, you, your first your first role was? Uh... Actually, I'm I'm going to see a documentary him and his wife did tonight. Um, was it Charles Wilkinson? Charles Wilkinson and Tina Schleischler. I don't know if I said that right, but uh, they did Oil. Oil Sands Karaoke, which I'm going to go see tonight. But he directed the very first film I was ever in called Max um, with R. H. Thompson and oh. Um, Denise Crosby. And how old were you then? I was five. Five. That was the first first thing I ever did in Merritt, BC. I think it was 1993. Mm-hmm. And you've gone from like the acting life usually is like five, six a.m. call times, work for 12 hours. Now you've gone to the music life, which is generally like yeah, when well, you start work start at 9 p.m. start even in the studio, you guys work late at night. Yeah, you go all night. We were just in the studio last night, and we were supposed to stop at 11. Of course, we didn't get out of there till one. But it definitely definitely is polar opposites in terms of when you start and when you finish, things like that. But of course, I mean, on a movie set, you you shoot until it's done, right? Mm -hmm. so. Which can mean late nights, but like exactly. rock and roll, it doesn't seem to start till. What is there? What is it about the? No, you need. Of? You definitely need to be a night owl if you're gonna be uh, in the landscape of rock and roll for sure. If you're gonna be. Um, an animal that that lives in that world and it's got to be something that uh, what's the word being nocturnal I that's know that's it nocturnal that's the word I was looking on for. the acting thing you uh, another kid role you had you were in this movie the story of us with Bruce Willis and Michelle Pfeiffer yeah good research that was a long time ago yeah what uh, so it was a, a romantic comedy with Bruce Willis which I find hard to imagine but what tell me about that experience it was then I remember that being kind of a bit of a big deal he was kind of stepping outside of his action roles and he didn't step back outside of his action roles for a really long time after that. <laughs> um, 
It was fun, yeah. Uh, Rob Reiner wrote, uh, mm -hmm. well, he directed it. It was written by Jesse Nielsen and mm -hmm. Alan Zweibel. Uh, and they worked together all the time, but it was just, it was just real Hollywood stuff. We were working on, you know, working on the lot, working on sets. Who did you play? I played their daughter. And how old were you? I was 11, maybe at the time. I think about 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of FaceTime with Bruce and. Uh, they were Michelle. very sweet. We had some really intimate scenes. I had a scene where I spent about eight hours in bed with both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that was interesting. They were really, really, really sweet, really mm -hmm. nice. I met his daughters and her kids and everything. And mm -hmm. there was a, a boy that played my brother, and so his mom and my mom got to hang out, and we got to hang out. It was great, great way to grow up on a movie set. It's it's safe. It's awesome. There's gummy bears and craft service. What more do you want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and so, but like now, you switched more your, your creative muse is taking you more to music, really, like because this the uh, Down River sort of a a return to acting, but you know, you well, it's a nice, anymore. happy medium. Um, in between the two, again, like Ben, uh, being a friend of mine, it's a little autobiographical, so he wanted to um, combine my two sort of talents, I guess. And it's so nice to be back in the acting world. I feel so at home on a movie set, and I so many familiar faces. I have to often remind people of who I am because the last time I saw them, I was probably, you know, pre teens, but. Um, but it's nice. It's still very much a community that's alive and well and that I'm still a part of. And, and going to these events for the Vancouver Film Festival and seeing everyone um, is just a reassurance of that. It's, it feels a little bit like coming home. I spent so much time acting, mm -hmm. so much of my childhood. It's, it's, it's really nice. You, uh, you actually knew the, the movie is, is not a biopic or anything, but it's sort of an homage to the spirit of uh, actor Babs Tula, whom we lost a while ago. And you mm -hmm. knew Babs as when you were a kid, you worked together with her. We, I met her in one of my first auditions when I was five, and she was always sort of around. I mean, everyone talks about Bab. She's she's everywhere. She, she was you know the heart and soul of a community, and um, I got to work with her when I was a little bit older. And it's funny, you know, I was saying this the other day to Gabe, Gabe Miller, who's who's in Down River as well. Um, then I. I, I lost her just when I was kind of coming, we lost her when I was just coming out of a bit of a fog. And now that I'm sort of harnessing my creativity and, and, and my artistry as she was so helpful and, and mentored so many people in harnessing, I, I really wish so badly that I could know her now, you know? but. The spirit of who she is lives on in the people that she's touched, and I'm lucky to have a lot of those people in my life, especially through the community that that is sort of rallied around this film, and um, it's it's really special to be a part of.